Hello and welcome to the first in what I hope will be a large series of videos I'm making to document some of the more interesting things I've learned in IT and IT security over the years. I'm going to start this video with a simple disclaimer. This video is provided for educational purposes only. Misuse of the information provided within this video could result in some jail time, so please use your common sense with regard to this information. Basically, don't do anything you're about to see on any network or system that is not your own personal private property. Now then, today I'm going to be looking at a simple example of an MITM, or as it's more commonly known, a man-in-the-middle attack. Before we begin, though, we have to talk a little bit about the setup I've created here to perform this attack in. Uh, I'll be using a couple of different virtualization products, uh, starting with the one on screen right now, which is VMware Workstation 7.1.3. Within VMware Workstation right now, I'm hosting a Windows XP Professional Virtual Machine, and within my Windows XP Professional Virtual Machine, I am running Kane and Able from uh, Oxid.it. Uh, it's a freeware uh, hacking application that's been around for a long time, certainly one of the better Windows hacking applications out there. Uh, next, my victim machine is uh, going to be hosted in Citrix Zen Server 5.6, and it is a Windows Server 2003 R2 client system that is a member of a domain. That will be relevant a little bit later on. Now then, let's talk a little bit about the, the mechanics and the specifics of this particular attack. Uh, in this particular attack, I'm going to be configuring Kane and Able to perform what's called ARP poisoning, which will allow us to get in the middle of connections between desired IP addresses on our network. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about how this works. The address resolution protocol, better known as ARP, allows computers to map MAC addresses to IP addresses. Got to remember, computers only care about the MAC address, which is the actual hardware address of the network adapter. The IP address is just there for human benefit. Uh, this system allows a computer to know uh, who it's supposed to be sending packets to when an IP address is specified. The man-in-the-middle attack works by tricking ARP or, or, or just abusing ARP into updating its mappings and adding our attacker machine's MAC address as the corresponding MAC address for any communication paths we wish to be in the middle of. Now that we understand what we're going to be doing, let's go ahead and uh, and do it. Uh, here we can see I'm on the sniffers tab within Kane and Able. I'm going to go ahead and start sniffing, and I'm going to go ahead and add uh, uh, do the add to list feature here and run a scan for hosts on my network. Uh, here in the scan box, we can see we've got a couple of options. I'm going to simply use the all hosts of my subnet uh, range. You can also do ranges uh, or even some promiscuous mode uh, uh, scans, which may elicit responses from machines that might otherwise seem to be unavailable. Let's go ahead and fire this off. Now, the uh, IP addresses we're going to need to be concerned with uh, today, we have one here, which is my router and my connection to the Internet. Uh, we're going to be getting in between the communications on that. 190, which is my domain controller that my victim machine uh, talks to, and 191, which is my victim machine. Now that we have these uh, in our list, we can go ahead and switch to the ARP tab, and we can use our Add to List button here to create some uh, man-in-the-middle rules. So I'm going to go ahead and say any traffic going from 191, my victim machine, to 1, which is my default gateway, I want to get in the middle of, and I'm going to go ahead and say any traffic going from 191 to 190, which is my domain controller, I want to be in the middle of. I can now click the uh, Start Stop ARP button to go ahead and begin the ARP spoofing process. We can see now my status has changed from idle to poisoning, and uh, a number has then populated itself in my packets to and from fields here. Now then, let's go ahead and hop over to our victim machine and generate some packets. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start by logging in, just as you normally would to any domain on uh, on any computer. Uh, I'm going to be logging in as Bob the Admin, and Bob the Admin, uh, you'll see frequently within my videos, is going to be our victim a lot. Uh, Bob has a simple password here that we'll, uh, we'll be seeing in a moment. Go ahead and type in password there, and we're in. Now, uh, Bob's machine is, again, it's Windows Server 2003 R2. It's fully patched, or at least pretty fully patched. And uh, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and just do a little bit of browsing the Internet as Bob here. Uh, as we can see, we just pop right up to Google.com, and we're going to pretend to check our email here with Bob. Now I'm going to go ahead, uh, what I'm going to type in here, these these are fake credentials. Uh, for our purposes, they'll work. I don't actually need to log into a Gmail account to demonstrate what I'm trying to demonstrate here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and type in Bob the admin, which I have pre-populated there, and I have a password uh, saved for him too, which we'll be able to take a look at here. Obviously, this is a, a fake Gmail account. There might be a real Bob the admin, but it's certainly not me. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Uh, now we can see here, I've gotten uh, uh, an ear here from Internet Explorer, and this might be Bob's first, last, and only clue that something uh, nefarious is going on. It says here, to help uh, protect your security, Internet Explorer has blocked this website from displaying content with security certificate errors. Click here from options. Now if we'd actually been trying to log in, it would have simply prevented us from logging in altogether, which if we're like most users, we're just simply going to go ahead and click through this to, to, to get to our web page that we want. 
pretty much still doesn't go anywhere, but uh, but we've accomplished our purpose now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, log out of our, our victim machine here, and we're going to go back to our attacker machine and look at some of the stuff that's happened. Now we can see here on our attacker machine we've got a whole bunch of packets going from uh, 191 to 190. We've even got some packets going from 191 to 1. So we have captured some data. We can see we've served some fake certificates, which are self-signed certificates uh, that Kane uh, generates here. And we can see we've uh, we've uh, created some uh, uh, captured some HTTPS sessions as well. Uh, we can see that uh, some were closed by the client, some were reset by the client. Uh, these these session states might be relevant to us for certain things. We didn't capture any RDP or any of the other stuff that we can actually capture through here. Uh, we'll we'll look at some of this stuff in maybe later videos, but not tonight. Uh, now if we switch over from our ARP tab to our passwords tab down here at the bottom, we can see we've captured a couple of things. The first thing we've captured here is an MS curb 5 pre-authentication hash, which is basically the hash of Bob's password here. This big long string of, string of numbers would basically allow us to, uh, to get Bob's password. We can do a lot of different things with this string. We can try to crack it manually. We can try to use a brute force attack to crack it. We can try to use rainbow tables to crack it. By the way, that's another video I'm going to look to do here in the near future. But tonight we're just going to do something very, very simple. I'm going to go ahead and click here, and I'm going to go to Send to Cracker, which will send it to Kane Enable's built-in Cracker tab up here at the top. And we can see here I've now got my uh, mczlab.localbob account and his hash, and I can now start either a dictionary or a brute force attack, or I can simply test passwords. And since I happen to know exactly what Bob's password is, I'll share it with you guys tonight. Bob's password is PA550, or just two fives word. Uh, as as type there, hit enter, and we can see here. Oh, that was the correct password. So we now know Bob's hash uh, matches to that particular password. This would allow us to do things like password guessing attacks, uh, a number of simple things there, or uh, even just to, just to get a hold of that hash to attempt to to break it using a brute force method or something else. Now, if I if I go ahead and uh, 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 I'm going to just remove this one and re-add it here so that my uh, password isn't populated in there. We can see we have options to perform dictionary attacks uh, uh, in which we can load dictionary files uh, that, that we want. We can also uh, do a brute force attack which will simply allow us to try everything until we eventually get to Bob's character or Bob's password. Uh, lots and lots of characters means this attack would take lots and lots of time. Now then, let's switch back to our sniffers tab. Uh, Bob's uh, domain credentials aren't the only thing we captured in this attack. We also captured what Bob sent to his Google login, uh, which is Bob the admin with a password a password there. Again, that's not a real Gmail account. Uh, somebody could go out there and register it if they wanted to. Probably, uh, probably have. I don't. I don't know. Uh, anywho, that just simply shows that we can intercept Bob's credentials as he attempts to authenticate to sites through this type of attack as well. So pretty cool. Pretty simple attack. Uh, definitely demonstrates really the, the flexibility of what we can do with our poisoning. Uh, but now that we've seen the attack, what can we do as, as network admins, as the good guys on our network, what can we do to maybe prevent this attack from occurring uh, on our own networks? Well, I'm going to go ahead and grab our client machine here, and we're going to look at one such method. And I'm going to log back in as, again, Bob here. Now, uh, one thing we can do to go ahead and uh, and make this system not vulnerable to this particular attack anymore is we're going to open a command prompt, and we're going to add some static ARP entries. So if, for example, I wanted to make sure that uh, 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 any time Bob was trying to query the, the default gateway or my router on this network, uh, he got to the right place, I could do a, a, a command like this, ARP-S192.168.0.1, and then the MAC address that corresponds to that particular uh, 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 connection which is 001FBC00E9E9 uh, 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 96 in this particular case. And doing that will create a static ARP entry in my ARP cache that says, okay, uh, I'm not going to accept dynamic uh, entries for this anymore. The the accepted accepted reality here is that this IP address maps to this MAC address. This will prevent uh, ARP poisoning from working very, very effectively. However, it can be a bit time consuming to go around and do this on a lot of systems. Uh, it may be effective on your network to create some sort of simple script to uh, configure very, very important IP address and MAC combinations, such as your domain controllers, DNS 
DNS servers, things like that. Uh, that will definitely increase your network security by a little bit, certainly something that will help. Now, another thing that we can do here, which unfortunately I can't show you because I don't have the equipment to do it, or, or even the simulated equipment to do it, is a lot of switches will allow you to set up what's called port security, which uh, will will look for if there are multiple MAC addresses mapped to a single IP address on that particular switch. So if that uh, that, that particular port is trying to respond to uh, queries uh, for, for multiple IP addresses, multiple MAC addresses, you can kind of assume that that's probably not legitimate, and in most networks you can shut that feature off by enabling port security. So again, something to look into. Anywho, that's the end of this video. Uh, hopefully you guys will join me for more later. I'll be uh, trying to add more, uh, at least one video a week from now on, uh, and, and I hope to, to certainly hear whatever comments, uh, questions, concerns, thoughts you guys have in the comments section. Uh, I'll even take suggestions for videos. If there's a type of attack or type of technology that you would uh, like to see demonstrated, I would be happy to look into it. So feel free to throw those out there. Uh, that said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video.